Okay, go ahead and tell me about that. First, tell me your name. My name is Dernita Leach Taylor. And how old are you? 67. When is your birthday? 11-1-51. 11-1-51. And you're my cousin, aren't you? I'm your first cousin. Yes. Yes, my first cousin. And you are the daughter of Viola and, and David, David Leach. Leach. Right. And we have talked with Viola and uh, just wanted to follow up with you because I know that you've stored a lot of Morton history in your head and uh, so we just want to sort of pick your brain a little bit and and pull that information out so um, just want to start as far back as you remember mm. do you remember uh, your grandmother and grandfather on your mother's side because yes. we're, we're going through the Morton line is what we're concentrating on yes I do Okay, and what were their names? Al Porter and Mary. Al, Al Porter and B. Uh huh. Al Porter and B. And where did they live? My first knowledge of their presence or where I visited them at was on um, Bar Street. Okay, on Bar Street. In the West End. And was it just them living in the house at that time, or were there no, any well, children? Oh, eight children, two adults, and three rooms. Wow. And an outdoor outdoor toilet. toilets. Okay. In the backyard. And where did they move from there? From Bar they Street. They moved from Bar Street to Laurel Homes. To Laurel Homes. Mm -hmm. On Clark Street. And that's where they stayed until, until they their died. until their death. Why do you think they stayed there? Do you have any idea why they they never moved away from Laurel Homes? Probably financial financial but it was it was convenient all the children were gone except the youngest mm -hmm. child um a lot of homes were very nice then very very nice um it was a, a large apartment you had an upstairs and a downstairs mm -hmm. so the downstairs had a kitchen living room uh, huge you came up steps and that's the first part and then you went up another set of steps to the bedrooms Mm. So it was a very nice apartment. Mm. It was a very nice apartment. In fact, it was a, a let's say it was an upgrade for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, was that CMHA? Was that Metropolitan Housing? I don't think so. Not at the time, but I'm not, that I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember as a child. It might have been. Um, but it was the first place my mother lived also, so I'm not sure. Okay. And um, Al Porter and Mary originally came from where? Max, um, no, Abbeville, North Carolina. Okay, Abbeville. All right, have you heard the story where they were going to just stop in Cincinnati and go from Cincinnati to another destination further north, but then now that's what I have heard, that Mary liked it here so they stayed, but originally they had planned to go further. I don't know if it was Detroit or what. I don't remember what. that. Okay. Because we have lots of family in Detroit. Ah. Um, yes, because um, I visited the Mortons every summer uh, in Detroit. That's why my mother sent me almost every summer to visit with um, the Morton side. And those would be related to Al Porter. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Al Porter, um, Uncle, Grandpa's sister lived there. Her name was Maddie. And um, that's who my mother visited when, when she was pregnant with me. Mm. And, and every summer after. So it would make sense that he was heading toward Detroit. Yes, because they're, they're, their sister, his sister was there. Mm -hmm. And she had, um, she had two boys, and then they had a family. So we were all the same age. So I grew up with Diane, Chucky, Marion, and Sheila. We were all about a year apart mm -hmm. in age. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we grew up like sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. I wonder how I missed that. I don't remember ever Mother, going to Detroit. Mom, grandpa, mom was grandpa's favorite. Viola. I don't know why. She was the only one that got to visit Detroit. 
only one out of the eight that got to visit Detroit as a young young adult. Interesting. Mom says she was his favorite and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he took her with him mm -hmm. to visit and every summer after that after she got grown, she was sent there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that's news. That's new information. Never heard no, of that before. My mom was the only one that never got to finish high school. Your mother did not finish high school? No, she was the only one of the eight that was, she had, she was told she had to leave school and get a job. Now she told me, or maybe I'm getting confused with Alfronia, I'll have to listen to the tapes again, but I thought she graduated from Stowe. No, she went to Stowe. She went to the eighth grade. Eighth grade at Stowe. Eighth grade. And she didn't have any schooling after that? No. Now, do you know what her first job was? Or what work no, she did? She, she worked at a nursing home where went after in the eighth grade. After that, she had to go work at a nursing home. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When I first met them, they were all adults, but living at home. Uncle June mm -hmm. My father. was getting ready to go to the service. Uh -huh. Or had left for the Navy because he was like, it's too many kids up in here. I'm right. Wrong. I'm getting out. Right, right. So he was the first to leave. Okay. And then Ab Aunt Evelyn got married to Uh-huh, uh-huh. But they all finished school. Except oh, mom. except your mother. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, your mom told me that she worked, I think it was for the city, um, checking in on families my down mother, in the West End. My mother's, that was in her first job. Her first job, my knowledge of her first, well, she worked in a nursing home, and then she married my dad. And then um, she didn't have to work. I don't think she worked while he was gone. Mm -hmm. To Korea, mm -hmm. she had me. She moved to lot home, so she lived. I guess she lived off of his service, his service pay. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved from, Daddy came home from the service. We were in lot home. As soon as he got home, mm -hmm. he got me. She's blowing it now. Okay. At the house a lot. At um, the Garbers. Yeah, they had this beautiful house over in Roseland, Amber, Roseland area. Mm -hmm. And so Amy was there. A lot of times Amy would need a ride or something, so mom would go pick her up. And that was Evelyn? Yeah. Okay. Amy. She's mm -hmm. the only one I called. Mm -hmm. And Evelyn. And, um, but we were always invited there. Mom, they all became very good friends. Mm -hmm. Mom worked for the uh, Garbers for about 15 years. Wow. Yeah, Amy worked there until. Um, but you're saying Evelyn got on because Viola was working at the pharmacy, right? And they and needed someone to housekeep. Okay, okay. And Evelyn worked for them for how long? Until she decided to retire. Wow. Until she got sick, I think. Even after she got old and really wasn't cleaning, cleaning, uh -huh. she still went there. They still had her come. But I think Mom said mostly she was sitting around in her and Mrs. Garber just talk. Yeah. Went to the store together. Yeah. Yes. Watch TV together. Wow. Um, but she still went. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they still paid her. Wow. They still paid her. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Not finishing school. Mom not finishing school. Mm hmm. But working for the Garbers. She worked her first job. We moved from the Lar Homes. To Uckerberger, to an apartment um, on Uckerberger, and Ma had a job at Garber Farmers mm -hmm. on corner of Uckerberger and, and Uckerberger. Right, so that was right up the street. We could walk; she could walk there. Yeah, yes. she didn't drive at the time. And this is Avondale. Avondale. Mm -hmm. Avondale. Mm -hmm. And then my father had been in the service, so with his GI Bill. Mm -hmm. He got a job working for the post office, mm -hmm. and we bought a house, his first home, in Evanston on Stacy Avenue. And didn't you say that the highway came through? The city was purchasing, oh, building a highway. Mm -hmm. So they purchased my per my fam my parents' home when I was 12, and we moved to Kenny Heights. After purchasing the home, then they, my father purchased another home 
with that money in Kennedy Heights where my mother lives to this day. To this day. And your mom shared with me that she got a letter from the community about leaving. We still have that. Do you still have we the still, letter? My mother still, it's actually not a letter. It's, a, it's several postcards that said, if you niggers don't move from this neighborhood, we will kill your children and then we will kill you. And you've got those cards? They're somewhere in mom's. We, we just kept them. I don't know. Yes, I would love to take summer. pictures of them. I won't I take and scan to, them. I'll just take pictures I have of to them. Find them. And I hope, yes, please. You know, she went into a cleaning spree right after daddy died. Oh, Lord. She really did. Um, actually, I had to go and grab a bag that she was throwing out. And it was the deed to the house on, on Stacy. It was the deed to the house on uh, Red Bank. It was. Uh, it was their the paid off property. This property's paid off. It's where yes. they got the loan from. It yes. Like, but you know, she's always been this person, just this very orderly, clean person. And it was just the, the fact that it was daddy was gone, so it was like getting yes. back her order back. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where were we? So then we moved. To oh, Kennedy the Heights. the cards though. Oh, the cards. You're gonna find we those got, for we me. Got, I'll try. Um, hopefully she didn't throw those right, out. So they right. They used to stay. They used to be in the dining room where they had been for the last fifty years. Yeah. They were in a drawer, and it, then we got one about. I remember my brother and I knowing nothing about it, and then finding them because the police came to our home. Um, my mother, I guess my father called him um, because of the threat and his fear of something would happen to his children mm -hmm. uh, because we were starting school mm -hmm. and the fact that we would have to stand at the bus stop um, was a fear to my father, although he didn't fear too much. Um, but the fear that we had to stand there and something might happen to us. So. Um, the letters came for the last week, and then because we were the only black family, the first black family to purchase a home on that street. Um, but I noticed that after they couldn't, you know, they couldn't scare my parents away, that they started to put their homes up for sale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the home next door became available, and then that family that lived across the street from us in Evingston, which was part of my family's family from Evingston, they purchased a home next door because their home was being purchased by the city too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they lived next door to each other till they died. Wow. And now their son lives there. Oh. Um, but the letters were, yeah, they were scary because I was uh, getting ready to go to high school. Yes. And I just felt like, you know, like all my friends are, I grew up with are going to Withrow. I must go. If that means getting on a bus at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> and getting off on Montgomery Road and walking down the Withrow, I would do it. And my dad let me do it for a little bit. Uh, and then he said, no, it's too dark. Something's uh, going to happen. You know, that's when you may, someone may approach you mm -hmm. because it's too dark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, then, well, how was it at the new school? What was the new school that you attended? I attended Woodward High School. Woodward High School? Yes. I did not like it. Or did you have any incidents that occurred? I mean, I how guess, did the students treat you? I think it was just you? the fact that at that age, the friends that you had made during your entire childhood were already created. Mm -hmm. And that to come into something like that at when somebody's going to be a teenager in high school, they had already became the persons they were going to become. Mm -hmm. The friends that they had established were going to be their lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it there. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? My best friend from Evingston, the city purchased her mom's home. Ah. And they bought a house in Silverton. Okay. And that meant that we, I had that one friend. That was at Woodward with me. Awesome. And it was my best friend. Great. That was my best friend. And that's how I was able to sustain yes. at Woodward High School. Yes. Um, 
But so I about what year? What, what year did you graduate? I graduated in 1969. Okay. In fact, this year we are going to be celebrating, and I have been invited, and I haven't sent my papers back for our 50th class reunion. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm excited about attending. Great. I'm excited about attending. Mm -hmm. I became more popular at Woodward. Uh, back then, we had sororities and fraternities in the high schools. Mm. And when I was um, asked to join a sorority, I became a lot more popular. Mm -hmm. um, simply because if you joined a sorority, that sorority um, always had five girls from each school in the city. You had to rush what they call it, Rush. Mm -hmm. But it was Hughes, Tab, Withrow, Woodward, um, Quarter Tech mm -hmm. at the time. It wasn't mm -hmm. um, Central yet, it was Quarter Tech. And um, so therefore you got to meet all these people. Yes. And you got to meet their sisters and their brothers yes. where they went to church mm -hmm. and their parents. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how, um, I guess that's how I know so many people now mm -hmm. throughout the city. Mm. Not only that, but the fact that our parents had eight siblings, and they had children, right? And their children had friends, and so you got to know their friends, right? And their older siblings had they had older siblings, and their older siblings had friends, right? And so we just became people who knew lots of people. Yeah. Now, before I forget, do you know what Al Porter Morton did for a living? You know what? I don't remember what Grandpa did until he, um, until he laid brick. He laid brick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and Grandma, she was a stay at home. She, she stayed, stayed at home. home. Mm-hmm. She always. She never worked. Okay. Now, one thing I found out, uh, I knew that they had a garden. But I On didn't. The river. Yeah, I didn't know that. You uh, never went to the river. I don't. I don't know if I went. Maybe I was too I young to remember. The and there's that. a picture Alfronia has of Al Porter working in in I the have, garden. Yes, I have. I have a picture, and I have to look for that because I haven't felt it this week. But I have a picture of him and Dad just kind of standing there talking, but we're in the mist of the garden. Yes. And they were talking, and both of them have their hand on their hip, and they're kind of talking. Oh, I'd love to see that. And I'll have to. I have to get that for you. I have yeah. so many pictures. Yes. Have. You and your so mother many. and Alfronia. We have so many family oh, pictures. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, I don't. Um, and I so do many. want some pictures because when I put this on the YouTube page, okay. it'll it'll be this recording, but I'd like to show pictures throughout. So mm -hmm. it, it, not, people aren't just hearing our voices but they see you okay. know who we are and where we came from and our relatives okay so can okay. you name the eight children um, Mary had can you name them and their children yes okay from the beginning it would be um, Joseph and his children are Rosalind um, Melanie and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, Evelyn. Evelyn had Michael, Janice, and Joyce Ann. Mm -hmm. Then you have Viola. No, you had Alonzo, who had <laughs> three three families. Yes. Three wives. Yes. Um. So the first wife was Juanita, and that was Diane. Uh -huh. They had Diane. And then you had um, Aunt Flani, and Aunt Flani had Belinda and Yvonne. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Aunt Alma, was his present wife until he passed, yes. had um, Teresa. Yes. And then you had Viola, who had myself, Darnita, and my brother, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Then you had Alfronia. She had Gary... And Randy. Yeah. You had. Gosh. From, uh, then you had um, Albert. Had Albert? Wait a minute. Evelyn, Joseph, Alonzo, Viola, Alfronia.
Odessa. Odessa. <laughs> Odessa. You had Odessa. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't believe I had. I, yeah, I'm getting older. Had a moment. Odessa, you had a moment. I've seen your moment. <laughs> you had Odessa. We had Michelle and Jason. Yes. And then you had um, Albert, who had Yanni and Albert Jr. Yes. And then you had the youngest, which was Gladys. <laughs> and she had um, Rhonda, Kelly, and Chris. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that is Lord. awesome. <laughs> Gee. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. That's, that's a, a tough, tough one. That's Absolutely. That's so uh, now about yourself. You um, finished high school. Yes. Did you have any college or, or yes. training? I went to UC, Raymond Walters, to the nursing program. They had a two-year RN program. I finished the first year in nursing and decided it was way too hard, although it was always my passion mm. and still is. Mm. Um, and then I went into um, elementary education for another year. I really loved it, but then got caught up and thought I was in love and I got oh, married. Oh, yes. Got married. That's what happened. Got married and dropped out. Mm -hmm. And never went back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I so what kind to of be in nursing though? So I, mm -hmm. I got a job with a doctor. Actually, the home that I live in right now was owned by Dr. Vera Edwards and Dr. Arthur Edwards. She was a clinical psychologist for the Cincinnati Public Schools, mm -hmm. and he was a dentist. And I, the home that I'm living in now, I was renting from her. And she came down one day and said her doctor needed someone to work for him. And she thought I would be perfect. Mm. Don't know why. Mm. Um, and I said, well, I don't have a lot of training. She said, no, we just need somebody to answer the phones and kind of make appointments. And I went to meet him and I was like introducing myself. And he said, okay, can you start now? I was like, you don't even know me. And he said, I don't need to know you. Dr. Edwards said you would be fine. Wow. And that's where I got the training that I do right now, mm. which is a medical assistant. Yes. What is, which is actually one step down from being the RN that I was born to. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I, um, he, I got grandfathered into this where everybody else that I work with now has had to go to school for mm -hmm. and get. My daughter is a medical assistant right now, but she had to go to school mm -hmm. and get her degree in this. Mm -hmm. So I was grandfathered in. So I can, I am a phlebotomist, I can draw blood, I do vitals, I can do everything that a medical assistant do. And I now, I am um, employed by Mercy Health, but I worked for the doctor that I worked for for eight years, Dr. Paul Huff. One of the first black doctors in Cincinnati that built a building in Wanted Hills where black people were allowed to go into the front door. Mm. So there were several doctors mm. there. Dr. Clark, Dr. Huff. Um, there was a black pharmacist, Harold Waller. There was a black doctor, foot doctor, Dr. Broach. Um, and they owned that building. They purchased that building. And where was it? In Wanted Hills on Gilbert Avenue. Okay. On Gilbert Avenue. And they just tore the building down a year ago. Did they? A year ago. And it's now parking lot. Ah. And it's now parking mm. yeah. But I worked for him for eight years. And then Deaconess came over and offered him a job working in their doctor's facility. And um, because his daughter was a, a, an attorney, she made sure that I was part of the deal. Awesome. And I worked awesome. for Deaconess for 10 years. And then another black physician, the first black urologist in Cincinnati, Dr. Emmett O'Neill, offered me a job. And then I worked for him for five years. And then I worked for University of Cincinnati for 10 years. <sighs> same, same position. And now I work for Mercy Health. Mercy Health. Awesome. Right. So your your career has always been in the medical field. Yes. Wonderful. I always knew I wanted to be a nurse. Yeah. But I just didn't do it in the college area. I mean yeah. I was even a candy striper. Remember candy striper? Oh, yes. I was a candy striper when I was a when I was a young woman. 
Mm. Well, young teenager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loved it. That's what I knew. That that's what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just got off the beaten path. Yes. Got married. And not. And, and many that, people do. You know, yeah. Mama did the same thing. She was yes. going to UC. Yes. And Absolutely. fell in love and got married. Yep. And that was that's all she wrote. And that's all she wrote. That was the end. Ah. Uh, so how how do you reflect on your life as a Cincinnatian? Have you had any uh, racial issues or any? Oh, always. Because I was born in the fifties. My parents. Actually, people don't think about it. My parents were not able to vote until I was into the 11th grade, 1968, when blacks could vote. Um, so I was actually in the 11th grade before my parents could even vote. I remember um, going to school and they announced that, um, first I, well, I remember in junior high school when they announced that Kennedy had been shot. And we had a city in there. And then I remember being in high school and they remember saying that Martin had been shot and killed. But they said, but school will go on today. And we said, no, it will not. Nor was the flag at half mass. They refused. So we left class and we marched uh, from Woodward to Withrow. We met up with those kids, and then I remember marching somewhere else, and I can't remember, but to another school. We tried to round up as many blacks as we could, mm -hmm. make sure everybody came out of class and would not participate in class that day. Although my parents didn't feel that way. They felt like I should have stayed, and I got punished for them, mm -hmm. for leaving school mm -hmm. and getting suspended for not going to school. But Did you get suspended? Yeah. Yeah. Um... But I remember, um, I remember an incident at Shulatos, where uh, my mother and I, she loved Shulatos, but blacks really couldn't afford the upstairs, so we always went to the downstairs to the basement. Um, and basically, that's where you were allowed to shop. And I remember um, a, a, a salesperson, we were standing there waiting to get in line, and there were several white women on one side of us, and they, she kept saying, can I help you? Can I help you? And I remember my mother saying, what? Whoa, ha, hold a minute. You not see me standing here? And the woman said, well, ma'am, they were, she said, no, 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 no. And you will not embarrass me in front of my daughter by belittling me like I'm not standing here. So you will wait on me now. Um, and this was where? Show and Show and Show and mm -hmm. On race. Mm-hmm. The fifth and race? I think it's Shilto's fifth and race. Just bakers, I remember, every Saturday. Shilto's, baker shoes right next door, mm -hmm. McAppas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't go to Woolworths because you couldn't sit on the counter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mother just refused to go there. Okay. If I can't go to the counter and order a soda, I'm not going to buy your product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, wow, your mom was pretty. An activist. Even though she didn't even realize yeah, didn't it, march and but she, she didn't, didn't she didn't allow people to embarrass her or be with her. Uh huh. But I think uh -huh. all the Mortons were like that. Mm -hmm. I think they were all very proud, um, proud people. Even they were really poor, mm -hmm. they refused mm -hmm. to be treated that mm -hmm. way. Why? Why were, were we poor? We were financially poor, but I remember Grandpa. I don't know if you remember this, but every time you greeted him. Porter would say, are we rich? Right. And I would right. say, I remember. No, well, I don't have any money, Grandpa. Do you have any money? I need money. He said, <laughs> baby, you are rich. You're rich in love. You're yes. rich in family. Yeah. You are rich in, in the home that you live in. You're rich. You will realize what I'm telling you later in your life, but you're rich. I remember him saying that. Always say you're rich. Yes. Rich. Yes. And, um, and I think it, it, that, and so we always believed <laughs> that we were rich and we had something, but we didn't have much. Mm -hmm. Not coming up. They didn't why, have much why, why is that? Why is it? Can you pinpoint why I we... Just, I don't know, except blacks were not giving, you know, you were given um, menial jobs. It was still very, Cincinnati, we're in the South, it's very racist. 
So you are only allowed to work so many places. And even if you work the same job as a, a white worker, you were paid less. Um, but I remember my parents and my grandparents never being without anything. Mm -hmm. If it was about food, we never were, if they were never hungry because they always had the garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the garden fed not only their family, but everybody on their street. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother said, so we won't embarrass sister so-and-so when you, so you take this, this little wagon, so you fill it up with this, the veggies from the garden. And then we would go to different people's houses on the street and deliver their food. But she said, you will not embarrass them. So, okay, sister so-and-so, tell her that I'd be a nickel. Sister so-and-so live right there, that's a quarter. And they would be so happy and they would bring give you their little money. Yes. And so nobody ever felt like they were being given charity because they were paying their way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew they was poor because they lived in three rooms. They had ten people living up in there. Um, and by the time my daddy came home, we was living in the war homes with three rooms and a toilet. Mm -hmm. I remember everybody said, Uncle Honey Pie said, we're going up to Violence to see the toilet. <laughs> Going to see the toilet. Lord have mercy. See her toilet. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I think, um, but as they grew, they all went their own separate ways, and, and yes, you know, but they all had, they all job, they all had jobs. Um, they all created families, mm -hmm. and they all created homes for those families. Mm -hmm. I think the only family that never lived in a house or owned their own home was Uncle Appy and, and Evelyn. Evelyn. And I don't know if it was because they didn't want to, because he was a uh, garbage collector or waste collector. Mm -hmm. um, so he could, and, and Evelyn always worked. So I don't. I think they could have if they wanted to, but the they didn't. I didn't think that was something they they, they didn't strive. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they. And then to. Uncle Happy passed when he was fairly young, wasn't he? Leaving her, and she never married again. So that that no, limit. No, but I'm trying to remember. I was maybe in high school. Uh huh. When he got cancer. Mm. Because I remember my mother going there, us getting on the bus, and and getting off the bus, and going there um, on a regular basis to go bathe him and feed him and mm -hmm. clean the house and help with uh, Uncle Abby. Because my mother's always been the caregiver mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the family. Uh, if somebody's sick, she cared for them mm -hmm. until they're passing. Mm -hmm. All of them. Joyce Ann, mm -hmm. Abby, Uncle Jesse, and Libby's husband, which is on my mm -hmm. father's side. Mm -hmm. You know, Dessa. Yes. I mean, it, it just, she, she was always the caregiver. Yes. Um, I think that bothers her now that she can't get out and go care for mm -hmm. people in the nursing homes or... That was, uh, my son is now grown, and uh, things he tells me now I never knew. Um, we all went to church together, but as children, they would always say, I'm going to go with Grandma after church on Sundays, him and Brandy, both my children. And I'd say, okay. And it was always a break for me, but I said, we always go. And my son used to say, well, what do you think Grandma and I did on Sundays? After we left church, well, go to her house, eat, and just played outside or something. She said, no. We visited the nursing homes. We took people, like he said, I remember there was one lady that grandma said she always wanted a Pepsi Cola. So we always took her a Pepsi Cola. Mm. But we were always at the nursing homes or at the hospitals. He remembered going to see Uncle Albert at the hospital. And he said he remembered walking in and bottle sitting. Albert, you're not gonna, you're not gonna believe this. My grandson, he got, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead, Lawrence. And he quoted the books in the Bible. So Albert, he said, I'm glad we got so excited. He just said, this boy's gonna be a preacher. He's gonna preach the word. He's gonna be a preacher. I say it now. I'm so excited. Yeah. But my son is 33 now. And I must admit, in the last, I think I broke my foot four years ago. I really haven't really been back to church. 
Mm -hmm. I got into a habit of not going, yes. which is easy. Yes, very easy. And mm -hmm. I really haven't really gone like I was before where I was so active. I was in Ursha. I was, you know, on, in the women's ministry. My children never missed a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Ever. Um, it was just the way I was raised. I enjoyed the church. Black people went to church not only to praise the Lord, but it was a place of haven. Yes. That you came together. You talked about families. If you needed help in your homes, you were able to find a plumber, mm -hmm. a carpenter, mm -hmm. somebody who knew about a job. Mm -hmm. You could help each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we communicated. The black families communicated with each other was the church. Mm -hmm. So my son is now 33. Hallelujah. And still, I still gets up every Sunday. He goes to church whether I go or not. And what I didn't know was he attends prayer meeting every Wednesday. Your mother told me that. And I didn't know for a long time until um, about a month ago. I said, Mom, you want to go to prayer meeting? And I was like, something special going on? He was like, no, it's just what I do on Wednesdays. Wow. And I was like, I am so proud of my children, especially my son. Because black men could be doing and are doing all kinds of things and getting into all kinds of crazy stuff that the world is now, as Satan is now bringing them into. But he has chosen to stay with the Lord. And I'm so proud of him. But last Sunday, he went and Yanni and her family were there and the pastor was saying, Ah, oh, you, you're so blessed to belong to this, this morning thing. And they were saying, yes, we know. And then Lauren said, you know what? The pastor pointed to me and he said, but this boy here, this boy here, Sister Leachy just walking in the footsteps. That's powerful. That's powerful. powerful. That makes you proud to be a boy. Yes. My cousin who was just here cutting the grass told me once. So it takes a lot of time with my mother. And I told him how much I appreciated it from taking her to the doctor because I'm still working. And mm -hmm. what he said, mm -hmm. it was what I was born to do. Mm. He said, as a Morton male, it was what I was born to do. It's what I have to do. He said, until I die, it's what I have to do. So being a part of this family, it's not something you can explain. It's just this huge blessing that God has given me that if I live for nothing else it's for my family I would do anything for Morton anything 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 I remember going to my son's wedding with you and Joe and I thought who does that Morton's <laughs> yeah. Morton's um, it's just a powerful, powerful, powerful family. And you know, that's one thing that I attribute our success, quote unquote, success Every one of us. in in this society in the is in the this favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of, the God. Favor of God. And I have always been told by Mortons, all eight of them, that we are so favored, we're so blessed, so blessed, we're loved by God. And he chose us out of all. <laughs> but he chose us. Yes. And I, I talk to young people every day at my job. Our family, a modern family, no longer exists mm -hmm. in this world. Mm -hmm. They don't know that kind of love. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have that kind of love. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah, they're pretty isolated. They're isolated. Yeah. Just like Monday when we went to the cemetery. Um, I missed everybody um, because we just simply, Monday, you remember, we just went there and we saw everybody. But mm -hmm. it's the first year where we weren't all circled around yes. the gravesite yes. and singing. Yes. And giving praise for our porter and for B mm -hmm. creating this awesome family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I miss that. Because well, I, I have the, pictures of that too. Good. I good. I want I want to I want them all. I do have the families of the upstanding the last time 
Oh, honey pie standing around. Yes. Um, it's on my phone. Awesome. I have to get those printed. Um, mm. yeah, um, yeah. And if you do have any, you know, digital pictures, you can always just text them to me. Oh, no, you can't. Here, there's a mosquito on you. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. So maybe you can get Lawrence. Or Br yes. Yeah. And they can just right. text them to me or right. email them to me, and then yeah. I'll be able yeah, to post those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll let, <laughs> whatever y'all do. Well, <laughs> I am, I'm not going to hold you any longer, Darnita, but my dear precious cousin, I want to thank you so much for you. giving me this time. And as with... I will find... Oh, I have these. You're going to laugh at